Hello guys, I'm Andalus from MBFX here. On the previous tutorial we saw how to do a basic fluid simulation. On this one we will see how we can use guided simulation on fluids. And that's very helpful, as you can see, instead of simulating a pool, we will simulate only one surface that is animated uh, with wave. And this wave will move our particles on our fluid simulation. We will use as well a free plugin hot for max before anything go download it's totally free uh, you just simply need to go to download it's done by guillaume and you will see that there is a 3ds max 2020 release and you have as well hot for max science it's like 10 12 years old so any version of max will work if you want to do fluids you need max 2018 but I suggest you to update to 2020. So that's my beautiful simulation. If you are one of my patrons, you can download that. If not, do it yourself. I am not the best animator. I did this submarine that it's kind of like emerging. On FX, we need always some pre-time to compute some stuff. When we create the wave, you will see that it needs some frames to start getting a nice motion and you don't want to see your simulation starting on a frame that there is nothing. You will see that this plane is simply a plane with some subdivisions. On the modifier list, let's add the hot for max, Houdini Ocean it's called, and you will see some wave. There are some parameters to tweak, resolution, you can increase it a little to get more resolution, don't go too crazy. Size, it's the overall size of this ocean, that it works for what you want. The skill is correct. I will try to do something quite turbulent, so it's kind of a storm. Then, when a spin at low values, you can see that it's doing something. After 10, it's not doing anything anymore. Then, shortest wave, if you increase that, you will see that it's smooth quite a lot. So you can have something very smooth or something more choppy, more, more resolution. Choppiness, if you keep it at zero, you will see that this is very soft. As you increase the choppiness, it will try to get more angular at the end. Don't go too far, because if you go too far, you can see that it starts to get messy. So check the biggest wave and check that it's not intersecting, something like that. Then wind direction, it's self-explanatory. Now it's moving from right to left. 90 degrees will go in this direction. And right now you can see that nothing is moving. Let's go to auto key. Make sure to be on linear. And on time, let's put this at zero, move at the end of your time range, and increase this time. Now we can see it's moving on this direction. I would like to move on the other direction, so let's... Or this direction is good because it will push against the, the boat. What I would like to do is that maybe not totally per, uh, perpendicular, so something like that. It's doing something cool, it will push against the, the boat. And we can tweak some parameters to try to improve this, break a little this regular noise. For the final result of the ocean, I tweak a little the parameters. And basically what I did, as you can see, the shortest wave, I increased it a little so I don't have so much uh, small wave there. You get a more clean surface, and I think it's give pretty nice results, and play a lot with the resolution and the size. Size is really important, to don't see too much a pattern, uh, but that's all. You can create kind of a cool, easy ocean with hope for ocean. What we will do is go to fluids, create a fluid as always, Remember right now, this will emit from this sphere. Uh, something that you need to do always is to check that your model is good. And I know that my model is not good because I imported that from a very, well, an old page and you can see that it's really badly done. So when you are on these cases, always I try to apply a cap holes. This will try to fix it internally if there is any problem and try it first. So with fluids, simulation view, on liquid attributes, I will add the submarine as a collider. Let's go to solver parameters, simulation parameters. First, let's increase this to two master voxel size. 
So we had uh, not so much resolution, so it will be fast. And that's all. Try, let's try to, to solve it with that. By the way, while this is solving, all this is caching on the project folder. Project folder, you can change it on right click here. You can display projects and you can define here your project folder. I say that, but because for example, for example, on my C by default, it's full. I like it to have on D and this is using tokens. That's pretty cool. It's using your SIM cache. Uh, it's using the scene name, the object name, then the solver name. So then if you upgrade that, it will be solving, it will be creating new folders automatically and you can automatically create these tokens here. I like it a lot. I hope that these they implemented it different places over time. And now we can see that it's colliding, um, the water is falling down and it's colliding with this boat in a good way, looks like good, but remember, if I don't have this cup hole on this model because it's really bad, it will have not good interaction. We want our water on this plane. In other cases, you will be creating a full box, filling it of water, you will need a lot of water. Then to do this animation will be very tricky, but because we have guided systems, it's very easy. We need the guide emitter and the guide mesh but we will be able to do as well that the water only appears on the contact between the boat and this mesh. But we want water everywhere to create also water from the, the wave. So we will use the same. For guide emitter, we will use the plane and for guide mesh, we will use as well the plane. Now, when we are doing that, it's not using any more the emitter. It will use the guide mesh as a meter, but it's, it will still using colliders. Now, if we go to the solver parameter, we have the liquid parameters that by default it's good because it's using water. On guide system, we have some settings that by default it's good and on water, the guide mesh, there is settings as well. We can increase the velocity scale so it will have more velocity than the actual mesh. Keep it by default by now. And the guide emitter that as well, we will keep it as it is for now. We only need to press play, restart and see what will happen. So here we are with our fluid simulated. As you can see, it's working pretty well. We have our wave forming from the plane, from the hot for max modifier. And we have the boat coming through the water and getting all the interactions with the water, get, creating splashes. And yeah, looks good. So next thing that we will do is to add foam on our server on our solver. So we have our solver with the mesh already calculated. We can deactivate it. We can see that it's done and we will activate the foam component. Then before doing anything, let's tweak some parameters on the foam. So if we go to solver parameters, we will go to foam parameters and let's see what we have. We have basic mode. I think it's good basic mode. And these values, as we saw in the previous video define when they will create these particles. So the minimum liquid speed for the, the foam to be emitted, the minimum liquid churn. So reducing that will mean that will create more often particles. So you can play with that. It's cool because if you left your mouse, you will see a tip. So here you can see that it's W is between zero and two. And with lower values, we are creating more foam. Let's go to 0.5. Curvature, we can have some air drag, 0.1 it's quite high, but we can keep it this way. Wind magnitude, I will keep it as default. Air turbulence can be cool to have some air turbulence, I will keep it low. Something very important, and it's on an advanced mode, it's the dissipation rate. So you don't want to dissipate too fast, so lower values will dissipate less. So you can go to 2. Will dissipate it will last longer the foam over your simulation and when this is done you can simulate again and here the final result with the simulation of the foam in top as you can see it's pretty fast to set up it's really far from perfect we should tweak a lot of things here obviously but it has been a literally one minute setup to do that so what I want to see with this tutorial is that the guided mesh, it's very useful. It's very easy to set up. Basically, we need to pick the mesh 
and that's all. And with HOT4 Max, it can be very useful to create di different types of ocean. So if you want to create different objects emerging from water, you want to have a boat interacting with water, or some letters emerging from the water, it's really easy to do it with fluids in 3ds Max. You don't need extra plugins. And I hope that you like it. Thanks a lot to all my Patreons. They will have this as seen, the start and the end file for download. If you want to be one of my patrons, you are helping me a lot as well, and you will get videos before everyone else. And thank you all. Please consider to subscribe, click on the bell, give me a comment, and thank you so much, guys. See you soon.